Ready, set, go. In this video, we'll see how quickly can we set up the RecFly Duo panel to become a great router panel for an AJ Kumo router, okay? So um, it's currently set up with some uh, weird content for a demo I did, uh, or photo shoot or something. And what we want to do is to make it really useful. So uh, we have connected it with USB to the laptop. I opened the Skyhoy firmware application. I press the online configuration button and it brings me to this website where I can configure my controller. So the first thing we do having a completely blank configuration would be to add a device. So I go here and I find the AJ Kumo router. I save settings and uh, I'm now ready to go back to controller configuration to, con uh, to configure this uh, further. So the first thing I probably want to do is to go all the way to the down uh, to the bottom of the list, enable the AJ Kumo router here, type in the IP address of it, like this. Uh, what is it? Um, if I remember correctly, like this. Yes. Okay. Save settings. Um, there we go. So I want the upper row to be output selection. Okay. So uh, whoops. Uh, what I want to do actually here is uh, show you something about Unisketch. I have all configuration open right now. That is not really efficient because then you have all the elements in one long list and it will scroll up and down and so on. So you can turn this off, which is uh, what you probably want to do. And then it will only show you those elements that you have enabled. Like currently, I have enabled six of these. I'm going to enable another six and probably another six. So I have all 24 enabled right there, okay? And then I go down and you can see X1 right here. I route, uh, no, I am not routing. I am um, uh, using a memory bank to select um, the, the, the route. So I use memory A and set it to one, which means that this would be output number one we select with this key. Then I insert this, two, three, four. So I'm creating an basically an output selector by the actions I am currently doing here, um, saying that, okay, I want to select the, the output um, on the upper keys. So the speed here is really depending on how fast I can move the mouse. And um, the cool thing is that Unisketch will basically, as soon as you make a change to any behavior of a interface component, it will copy that content to memory, so you can just press the insert button on the next action. That makes it that makes it really easy to uh, copy paste actions and just modify a parameter, which is what you quite often do when you configure controllers like this. So um, even though it's a little bit tedious, it is absolutely doable, and uh, that's what you're seeing me do right now. So quite quickly, I have now an output selector set up here. Okay, then I now open all the lower buttons uh, clicking these. I'm holding down the shift key so that I enable them all at the same time in the interface. Yes. Okay. So that's keys uh, one and so forth. Then I route input number one to output number. And then you go to the, to the, to the bottom of the list where you find memory A because I just set memory A on the upper row of buttons. I now use memory A to be the destination of uh, the route. So that's all I need to do. I just press insert and then I basically do this exercise once more. So uh, I have all these inputs set up. Yes. Okay. So uh, what we want to do after this is to consider whether we should have some color coding going on so that you, you see a difference. Because by default, those buttons will just light up white. And white is cool. Um, it's even what we have been striving for for some time because... Uh, looking at uh, red green buttons is a little bit dull in the long run. So uh, white is nice, but RGB colors is uh, nicer. Or maybe it's just a period in my life, or I don't know what, but <laughs> I like all those colors we can now apply to the Skyhoy control panels. That really is sweet. Um, so I think I'm just gonna play with those colors uh, along with you, but we can do that in the local interface when we have saved this. So now save settings. And I just want to name my configuration as well. So we will say Kumo routing. Yes. All right. So that is the name of my active configuration. And I can now go back to the firmware application, press check for updates, and we'll now have a firmware generated for the RecFly Duo, which will um, um, be downloaded and installed through the firmware application. 
uh, onto the panel and we'll see if that makes it work. In the meantime, I think I'll just bring up a check that I have access to my Kumo router right here. Uh, so I reload here. Yes, I do. Um, we should also see that the labels for all the, the sources will be loaded onto the displays. So let's just uh, wait and check if that is the case as well. Ah, you see the firmware is already ready. So it's uh, generated, it's downloaded, it's being written as we speak, as I speak, to the panel. And it's now verifying that everything went well. So we should now see in a moment, and let's just go to, to the top view here. It's done. And now it's rebooting. And you see the panel is booting up. And there you go. Now we have the, the whole row of, of uh, up here. It says memory A, and then you can pick any of these. As I press this button, you should see this one line up as well, which is not really the case. That was strange. So maybe we should check the serial monitor to see what is happening. Oh, it could not connect to the AJ Kumo. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, why is that? Um, hmm. I think, oh, yeah, now I know it's because of the IP address is not entirely correct. So what I want to do is now go to the web config. Um, I can just do that off the panel. So you see that we have um, the panel at this IP address. I will open a tab, go to this IP address. And then in the bottom, we see the uh, IP settings right here. And since they are on different subnets, I would need to change this one to a zero. So I have this IP address for my controller, this one for the AJ Kumo. This has to be a zero in order for that to work. So I save. And then as it's saved, I will need to reboot the controller. So I press the reset button right there. And we should now see that the controller reboots. Okay. Ah, that's much better, right? So now the, the bottom row uh, is also lit up and you see in the displays, the destination one, destination two, as I press two, and it's all updated in the display. Now it's destination eight and so forth. Shall we see if this actually works? Now, uh, let's go to the Kumo um, panel here. I have um, um, output number eight selected. So let's go to destination number eight and then see it's currently routed to input number eight. So we can try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so forth. I think there's no doubt this is in fact working. That's, that's just great. So uh, what I wanted to do is finally color code the sections because it's much more fun if you have a little division there with the colors. And um, I can do that going back to the web interface of the controller. So uh, we just need to enable it once again because we just rebooted. So we'll go to the firmware application and in the serial monitor type web config, it will now enable the web server for the panel. And we go to this IP address again. And there we are. So uh, we'll now use the color action to set colors on the sections. So first what I do is I uh, enable section one, four, seven, and 10. And then I go down here and select the color, local color. Uh, let's pick um, whatever, amber, uh, amber, yep. Amber, insert, uh, copy, insert, copy, insert. So for those four sections on the controller, I have now inserted an amber coloring for um, the uh, output selection. Shall we see if it works? If I press save, immediately it will be saved and it will update the panel. So now they are all nicely amber colored. Great. Let's do the same for the lower row and see if that works out. Um, I pick those uh, four sections um, and then we will select local color, choose something else like ice, insert, copy, insert, copy, and insert save and wait there you see the color change it's kind of bluish really beautiful panel i'm so happy it worked it was absolutely improvised but it turned out that unisketch didn't fail me and it worked just uh right there with a new generated firmware and also some local changes for the color so just to note if you want those color changes to go back to the online configuration you will have to uh, go back and put them in in the online configuration as well then they will be saved and they will be downloaded next time you upgrade your firmware <laughs>